So most of you guys might know that Paris is known to be one of the most visited cities in the world and it's also one of the famous ones too. And today I'm going to bring you guys around with me and my bike. I'm going to show you how the city looks like during this pandemic period because you know this pandemic period makes traveling so so hard. So at the moment Paris is not as crowded like it used to before the pandemic era and everything. So uh, today I'm going to go to some of the most visited places in Paris just to show you guys around uh, the situation and also um, what it's like right now. So without further ado, let's go to the first destination. So my first destination for today is the Avenue Champs-Élysées. It is the most uh, famous avenue here in Paris and it's the most prestigious one too. And usually people come here to buy things because you have a lot of shops and boutiques here. And usually uh, if it's not for this pandemic, this place is always, always crowded with people. So a little tip that uh, this place is, is one of the hottest places to get pickpocketed. So uh, make sure next time if you come here, beware of your pockets, right? One of the most standout buildings here in Avenue Champs-Élysées is actually just behind me. It's the Louis Vuitton 5 stories building. And usually you can find long queue at the entrance of the building. But anyway, broke people like me, I cannot go shop in there. So yeah, let's go somewhere else. And also one thing you need to know that Avenue Champs-Élysées connects to two other Paris attractions, which is uh, Place de la Concorde, which you can find at the end of the road. And also, the end of the road, we have the Lac de Triomphe. And usually, um, tourists they come here and they line up here to take photo with the Lac de Triomphe and as you can see behind me there's nobody here and I have the place on my own. So this is Lac de Triomphe and some of you might not know that we can actually go up there to the top. You just need to pay a little bit and you can go up there. Except if you have an uh, European visa or an, uh, you're younger than 25 years old I think if I'm not mistaken you can actually um, go up there for free. And if you want to go to the other side Please, please don't cross this road because it is really, really dangerous. So you're risking your life for nothing. And you can actually go there by taking the underground uh, tunnel. And the view from up there is really, really incredible because you can see the whole Paris from up there. But at the moment, I'm not sure if it's open because there's nobody up there. So now that I've shown you this end of the Avenue Champs-Élysées, Lac de Triomphe, Right now, let's go to the other side, which is Place de la Concorde. So right now, I'm at Place de la Concorde, or it used to be known as uh, Place de la Révolution, because this is where the last uh, French king, which is uh, Louis the Sixteenth, got his uh, head chopped off by the French people during the French Revolution. And today, this place is just a big, big square in Paris. And usually, uh, tourists come here also. Uh, as you can see, like there are not so many people around. So right now, I'm in front of one of the most recognizable towers in the world, which is, yeah, surprise, surprise, is the Eiffel Tower. Because the Eiffel Tower is like the face of Paris. It's not just Paris, it's like the face of France. Because when people think about France, they're going to think about uh, this tower. So logically, when they come to Paris or when they come to France, they're going to come here and take photos with the Eiffel Tower and everything. So it makes this, uh, this spot, this place, so, so crowded. But in this pandemic period, like, we can see there are much less tourist than usual so I'm gonna show you around And if you would like to know more about the Eiffel Tower, I actually made a whole video just about that. I even went to the third floor of the Eiffel Tower. So yeah, you can find the link in the description down below. And right now I'm at the Musée de Louvre or the Louvre Museum. And this is actually the biggest museum in the world. And if you want to see every single thing in this museum, you actually need several days or even a week to see every single one of them. And in the Louvre Museum actually you can find many many famous paintings, famous sculptures and many many famous arts and some paintings that you might know is like the wedding feast at Cana, uh, La Liberté Guidon de Peuple and also the famous one of all is actually Mona Lisa and just a side note do you know that French people don't call Mona Lisa as Mona Lisa they actually call Mona Lisa as La Joconde La Joconde yes they don't call it Mona Lisa and the reason why you see like there's nobody over there is because at the time of this recording uh, all museums in France are actually closed due to COVID and but if you see if you go to 
just in front of the Louvre, there's actually a big park over there, and you can see like there's a lot of people actually just uh, just chilling around on the grass. You know, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna show you. And my final destination for today is La Cathédrale Notre Dame de Paris. And this is actually one of the most iconic buildings here in Paris. And sadly in 2019, if you didn't know, this cathedral was on fire. And it was closed and it is still closed to the public until today because they are still fixing the damage done by the fire and also they are doing some renovation on it. And also you might think that the Eiffel Tower is the most visited place in, uh, in Paris. But if you take a look at the statistic, the uh, Notre Dame de Paris and also the Louvre Museum actually both of them, they receive more tourists per year than the Eiffel Tower. This cathedral is really, really old. It's about 800 plus years, if I'm not mistaken, because it has that um, Gothic architecture to it. Because if there's one thing I learned throughout my years in France is that um, we can actually tell the differences between uh, buildings that were constructed during the medieval period, for example, during the uh, Gothic period, during the uh, Renaissance period, because the way they were built is not the same, and you can actually tell the differences. And um, for this case, for Notre Dame, is Gothic, and the Gothic architecture it dominates France uh, between, if I'm not mistaken, the 12th century and the 14th century, something like that. So it's really, really old, 800 plus years, and still standing strong. So that's all for today's video, I hope you enjoy it and if you do, you can give me the like button and if you're watching this right now and you haven't subscribed to my channel, I mean, you're just one click away to do so. A la prochaine fois, merci beaucoup and ciao. You know, I think that one of the most underrated things you can actually do in Paris is grab a bike and just go anywhere because Paris is a big city and you can see a lot of things. You can actually uh, rent a bike, it's really easy here and it's not that expensive. So yeah.